Uh, what you're going to see in this video, this is the AMX 5120. This is a French Tier 9 heavy tank. The map is Glacier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head straight to the middle of the map where the lowest part in the hill is, and I'm going to ambush an enemy tank. I'm going to spot the enemy tanks as quickly as possible at the beginning of the game. I'm going to use an autoloader, and I'm going to hit him as hard as I can. I'm going to remove 95% of his hit points. And it works almost every game. And it's as simple as this. So I hit him for 1500 damage. Yeah, this tank is the AMX 1357GF. It's a French Tier 7 light tank. It's also probably my favorite tank in the game. And the map is Murovanka. I like this tank because it's got a really nice gun on it. Uh, it, it reloads very quickly. And uh, it's fast and it's nimble. I like this line of light tanks, the, the French light tanks. We're going to do some hit and run tactics uh, over here. And one of the ways to do hit and run is to do it where there's a hill and the reason why is because the enemy is preoccupied when they're next to a hill they don't expect you to come jumping over the hill and pon pouncing on them so what I like to do is find a tank that's sitting next to the hill and then I jump on them and almost always you can predict the where their gun is going to be pointing you can see there's a tiger 2 up ahead So that Tiger II looks like a good target. Uh, again, he's going to be angling his tank in a certain way. He's going to have his gun pointed in a certain way. You want to come in from behind and take as many shots in the rear as you can and on the side. Avoid firing at the frontal armor. And here I go for my run. you got to watch that building. And that was it. That's a sample hit and run on the Tiger II. I did about 460 damage uh, to the Tiger II. One, two, three, four, five shots uh, penetrated. This tank is the Bat Chat 25T. This is a French Tier 10 medium tank, and the map is Siegfried Line. I am going to get five kills, and I'm going to do 5,000 damage. Plus, I'm going to show you one of my favorite sniping positions on this map. When I play on this map, I often head in this direction, which is almost directly due south from, from the number two spawn knock down some of the trees, use the bush for cover, spot enemy tanks and snipe at them while they're trying to enter the town. It works out really well here. Those tanks are going to have a lot of difficulty getting into town. And often you will not be spotted. You're going to get spotted more at the near the beginning of the game when there's more enemy tanks when there's more scouts etc but as those tanks start to disappear it's going to be more difficult for them to spot you and as the enemy go goes further into the town you're going to be able to take up better positions like you notice i knocked another tree down this position isn't good at the beginning of the game but later in the game it is useful Okay, so I used up my rounds. I did 1,100 damage. I'm going to do some spotting right now while I'm reloading. The score is 2 to 0. You can see the enemy is controlling the entrance to the town, which is the west side of the town.
So you'll notice that I fired five of my rounds and I was not spotted. They're at the edge of my spotting range. Score is three to three. I'm up to 2,300 damage. So we've got that HWK out in the field. We've got uh, potential SPG out in the field. I always go for the ram. I didn't realize I was out of rounds. So I always go for the ram if I, if I had uh, held on to one of my shots, I may have been able to, um, to damage that tank without firing my final round, and I might have had an extra round to use at the arty. The other thing you'll have noticed is that because I was stunned, I did not let the reticle uh, close in all the way, uh, which means that my shot went wild. Uh, when you have the aiming reticle, the shot's going to land within that reticle, so you want it to, to cover as much of the enemy tank as possible. Now the score is 9 to 7. I'm up to 3,900 damage. Now we get to go on the rear of the enemy flank. It'll be nice if I can make this shot. That's four kills. Hopefully that Panther 2 will be on my side of the field. I'm on very low hit points, so I do have to be careful. I'm up to 4,300 damage, 5 kills. I only have 75 hit points, so I do have to be careful. One of my allies says, uh, nice cleanup, Bat Chat. Got two shells in the magazine. Uh, so you can see in the chat, the ISM says, give that man the golden broom. <laughs> uh, he was referring to what the, the comment that the T-92 had said. I got up to 5,200 damage, 400 spotting damage, 5 kills. I'm sure we're going to win this game. The score is 13 to 10. This tank is the Lorraine 40T. This is a French Tier 8 medium tank, and the map is Epic Normandy from the Frontline game mode. I've been having trouble with a guy sniping on me while I'm trying to cap the base, and if he's sniping on me, he's going to snipe on my allies, and none of my allies are doing anything about it. So I decided to pick up an autoloader and go after him. Uh, the one drawback that I'm going to have is that there's not only going to be one tank there, but his buddy's going to show up, so there's going to be two tanks there. Uh, and I'm not going to know it. At, I'm going to assume it because I see the IS-3 on the map. I'm going to assume that he's going to be a threat also. But when I realize that they're both in the exact same location, I can't kill both of them. There's, there they are. Now I just discovered that they're both in the exact same location. And I haven't played on this. This is, in fact, probably the first time I've played since last year on this side of the map. So I wasn't sure the best way to go after them. But I had to do whatever I could and try to focus on that IS-6 because he's the one that was being a pain in my butt. And he's on lower health. So 
I wasted one shot, and my allies did an air assault, and they finally did something about that guy. Uh, but unfortunately, we still haven't capped uh, base B. We've got a lot of tanks that are near the cap, uh, but no one's on it. And it looks like the IS-3 was also taken out of the game. So now we can uh, get onto that base in a capping position. Now, I want to make it easy for my allies. My tank is not the ideal tank to sit on that cap. So what my idea was, we obviously go to the repair point. But I'm thinking maybe I can go around and flank and get behind the enemy and get some shots in their rear. Because the enemy has strong frontal armor, weak rear armor. So why don't I get behind them? Oh, look what happens. I discovered somebody on the way over. Not quite paying attention. Unfortunately, I only penetrated two of the four shots. Uh, perhaps I missed one of the shots. And he hit me for one. So I, it kind of wasted the use of the autoloader. I do have two allies in the area. And I have a plan that when I reload, I'm going to go after that guy. Now, because I'm reloading, I decided to drop artillery. Unfortunately, it didn't show you who I dropped on. I dropped it on the Ferdinand. Uh, the Ferdinand who was defending the base. I rammed him for 250 damage. But unfortunately, he did a lot more damage to me. He did 460 damage to me. What's important is that he's out of the game. It's going to be a while before I can use the repair. It's going to be another two minutes. Uh, so this is going to be very interesting. Watch what's going to happen. So I thought, okay, I can get some. I noticed that I could get some side shots on this Alpine Tiger, or maybe there's two Alpine Tigers, and something really crazy is going to happen. I don't know if it's a bug or a feature, but they're just going to disappear. They're literally going to disappear right in front of my eyes. So it's either a bug in the game, or they use the the feature to relocate. Uh, something weird. Like, watch what's going to happen. See that Alpine Tiger? Watch what happens. just disappeared and he wasn't the only one a bunch of tanks disappeared it's possible that uh, it's a threat in the game that died or something like that but I also died so I was out of the game and I checked over here to see who the Alpine Tiger was and it says it's a guy named Target from SLRMK and what happened was I died he is going to show up over here when, when I come in with my next tank later in this replay. He's going to be on full health. At the point that we last saw him, he had like 350 hit points. And he's going to have driven from the spawn point on his team uh, down to the base. So it's as if he just suddenly went back to the spawn point without dying. I don't understand what happened. This takes us to Fosh 155. This is a Tier 10 French tank destroyer and the map is Kharkov. Uh, this is a 357 matchmaking game. I am the top tier. I looked at the enemy team and I saw a grill is on the top tier. He's a potential threat. They don't they tend to avoid uh, inner city fighting. And uh, we've got a few other threats like this object 704, but I saw a lot of soft armor so I thought I'd have an easy game. That's an example. That was three shots, 1,980 damage, very quickly. In a matter of 10 or 15 seconds, you could easily do 2,000 damage. Now I'm going to go for the long reload, which is 30 to 40 seconds. I'm going to get four kills. I'm going to do 5,600 damage. What you're going to learn is that a lot of people who get high damage games, a lot of it has to do with the tank that you use and the gun that you use and the tier that you're playing. And the Fosh 155 is absolutely a, a tank that can do a lot of damage, which is why I'm going to be able to get 5,600 5, damage in this game. It's going to be a very interesting game. Now, because I know I have strong armor, and I thought that the grill would be out in the field, even though he's in the city, 
He's going to die pretty quick. I knew that I would have weak opposition. So I decided to run through and kill as much as I can as quickly as I can. Get a little bit... Oh, the gun was in front of me. I was wondering what that was blocking my view. I didn't realize it was the gun of the enemy tank. But that's okay because he's out of the game. Now, the next thing that I did, I had one shell, and normally I would reload. But I said, oh, that's an easy tank. I'm going to go after him. Uh, but he was taken out by another tank. So I'm going to save my shell for an easy target, and there he is. And he's out of the game. You notice I'm going to hide behind this dead tank uh, to give me some protection from the Scorpion. The Scorpion has a high penetration gun, so he could easily damage me if he aims properly. The score is 8 to 9. You'll notice that we have a, a TD that's capping, which is a very good maneuver. Someone's complaining about what he's doing, but it's a smart thing to do. Uh, in fact, I believe we're going to win this game by capping, uh, but it's going to be later in the game. I got 3,900 damage. Scores 9 to 11. We're losing now, and we're going to have to find a way to pull through. Got three shells in the magazine. Notice how quickly I deplete I'm, I deplete their hit points very quickly. You know, I can do a lot of damage with this gun. I'm up to 5,300 damage already. And I'm just going to pursue this E50, line up the shot, take him out of the game. The score is 11 to 12. The score is 12 to 12. Now, the WZ and I are, are the last two after the object 704 gets taken out. And I realize that we're up against a T-55A, AMX 13105. We got the guns. They got the mobility. I was a little bit worried. So what I did was I made sure that the WZ followed me around, especially because I have a long reload. It's going to be a while before I'm reloaded. So I, I notify the WZ that I would like him to stay close. I allow him to go in front of me because he reloads faster and obviously because I'm not reloaded. But I don't want to be on his butt. I want to be enough in front and I want to be enough behind him that he can bait the enemy. I want the enemy to spot him and pounce on him and then I want to surprise the enemy with three rounds up the butt. Uh, it's not what's going to happen, but that was my plan. I'm keeping a certain distance behind the WZ close enough to to support him, but not so close that the enemy won't think he's vulnerable. I want the enemy to go after him. I did not like the fact that he went field. It was the wrong move. He should have stayed in the city, uh, because when he goes out in the field, it makes our side and rear vulnerable. Uh, when you stay in the city, your sides are protected, and your rear is somewhat protected because they, they have to get relatively close to you, but from here we could be shot from far away. You notice that I took a turn here, and the reason why was because I did not like being out in the field. I didn't want to go out in the field, but I allowed him to lead, and I had to make that choice. It's more important to stay together and to watch his back than to worry about whether or not we're in the field, especially because we got only two enemy tanks in the game, and they could be anywhere on the map. Try to anticipate where the enemy is going to show up. And I thought, well, this is likely where I think he's going to go. I think this is the best path. If the enemy were going to spot me, he's going to come down this little corridor over here. I'm going to line up my gun, and I'm going to get a lucky shot and take him out of the game. Now that AMX-105, he just might not be seen ever again. I don't know if he toppled his tank, maybe he spilled over on the side, but he's got 20 seconds to do something to reset the cap, and he's going to fail to do so. So the WZ and I, at this point I'm always worried, you know, don't get off the cap, I want my ally to stay on the cap, you want to win the game by capping, we got four seconds left, 
and that's the game. 5,600 damage, 4 kills, victory by capping. Hello, this is Dave from CheapBooks.com playing World of Tanks. This tank is the Fosh B. This is a French Tier 10 tank destroyer. The map is Erlenberg. Uh, this is World of Tanks 1.2. Uh, this is a standard battle. I am going to get, I believe, around 5,000 uh, damage in this game. This is also a six-shot autoloader. The Fosh is an amazing tank. It will give you high damage games. If you are looking to do a lot of damage, this is one of the tanks that will do it. I don't usually go to this position, but I often go to this position. You get pretty clear shots. You want to have a clear gap between the buildings, and you want to gauge if you think the enemy team is going to be aggressive or not. If they're not aggressive, you're going to have good shots from this position. See, our first customer showed up. With an autoloader, you don't want to waste a shot, and I obviously had a uh, poorly shot. My third shot wasn't well thought out. So I started with 1,900 damage. It's That's basically uh, 70 seconds into the game. I missed a shot on that tank. I have to reload. It is a long reload. I believe it's 40-second uh, reload. Uh, but as you can see, I, I got three hits on the bat chat, 25T, and two hits on the TVP. Uh, T-50. Uh, they are tier 10 tanks. The TVP is an excellent tank. You definitely want to do a lot of damage to that tank. And of course, the Bat Chat is also a good tank. Tracking them really helps when you got an autoloader. And I tracked him twice. Makes him a sitting duck. You, you do want to hit when you're going at long range, you want to hit under the turret, and the reason why is because the entire side has approximately the same armor thickness. If you hit in the rear, there's a chance of setting the engine on fire, but there's also a chance that you'll miss the tank and hit over the engine deck. So I aim for just under the center of the turret, so that if the shot goes a little high, it still has an increased chance of hitting the tank. Uh, the, there is a circle... Uh, your aiming circle, you the shot is going to land somewhere within that circle. So you want as much of the tank within that circle as possible. Unfortunately, I missed that shot. He was out of the game easily. I'm up to 2,600 damage. I did get two additional hits on a Leopard. I'm averaging around 400 or 390 uh uh, per shot, 390 damage. Normally I don't go this way, but I did see the Bat Chat 25T, and I wanted to line up a shot uh, between the buildings. Nice. Perfect. So that was two shots on the IS-4. I've got three left. It does take a long time to reload. So... When you have one shot left, you might want to hold on to it. You might not want to fire. You have to gauge uh, when to reload. And usually, if you're traveling from one place to another, that's a good time to reload. Especially if you have a slow tank. So because I was spotted, I'm going to hug the side of a building. Uh, there's no artillery in the game, uh, but I, I didn't know where the enemy was. It ends up he was right in front of me. I think I'm going to flub the shots against him uh, for various reasons. I do have a high ping time, it's 245 milliseconds, and I use the auto-aim a lot when I have a high ping time. Uh, because if you don't, the, the gun will go all over the place, and it's better for the gun to track the enemy tank when you have a high ping time. I believe that this enemy tank is going to make a mistake, and he's going to give me an open shot on his lower plate. We'll see what happens. So I did the auto-aim on the first shot. Next one didn't penetrate. Look at that. He reversed. He made a big mistake. He should have gotten closer to me. He should have gotten as close to me as possible. You want to get close when you defend and reverse when you want to take a shot. Uh, when he reversed, he allowed me to hit his weaker armor. 
at 3,700 damage. Um, I did 475 and then 13 against the T110E5. And I still have most of my hit points. I have uh, more than half of my hit points left. 1,080 out of 1,850. Now, I did say I'm going to get around 5,000 damage in this game. In fact, this I wonder if there's going to be a game where I get a lot of kills. I don't remember. Again, go for under the turret. Aim for under the turret. That shot missed. I don't aim in all the way. I, I, I fire the shot when I think that the that the circle has encounter has uh, encircled the majority of the tank. Uh, so sometimes I, I will miss like I did on that one. And also I fired a shot after the tank had died, which was a wasted shot, of course. He's got strong frontal armor, but if you got a perfect shot, I did 387 damage on the first shot. I'm up to 4,950 damage. Now that Grill, who's way out in the corner, uh, he's going to be, I think, uh, I think it's going to be, everyone's going to fire at him at the same time. So while I'm aiming, I miss my chance to, to get a kill shot in. But what I'm doing right now is I'm waiting for the TVP to go spot that last tank. Even though I know there's a good chance I'm not going to be able to hit him because he's going to be behind the slope of the hill. But I figured that there's no way I would be able to approach him in time. And you can see I just barely got a kill shot in. Uh, that was a miss, obviously. It was the, uh, the TVP who finished him off. I got two kills, uh, 4,950 damage, and the score was 15 to 4. This tank is the AMX 5120. This is a French tier 9 heavy tank, and the map is airfield. I'm going to show you a sniping position. Uh, certain sniping positions, uh, this is more like an ambush position. Uh, because this tank is an autoloader, it fires very rapidly. You can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. It's ideal for ambushing the enemy. It also works well with a derp gun that does a lot of damage per shot and might have a long reload. So what I do is I move over here. You've got to be careful where you go. There's, uh, you're going to spot the enemy, but there's two uh, dangers that you have to be aware of from this position. You can see the tank in front of me, the T-44, might also be uh, looking at the same position. Well, he's not firing, so I would say he doesn't know about it. Oh, somebody did fire a shot. Maybe it was him. So I've already done 1,100 damage, three shots from this position. Okay, now the question is, what are the dangers here? There's two dangers. One of them is going to be tanks where that IS is. If you're in the wrong position on in this space, uh, you can get hit by where that IS is. If he moves to a certain position and you happen to be in the wrong location, you can get hit. Uh, the second danger is, uh, you see that there's an LTG. There could be a tank right in front of you. Um basically right in the center of the screen on the opposite side of the hill, who can take shots at you if you're not paying attention. Uh, obviously, you can get sniped from a distance, but those are the two things you really got to worry about uh, because they'll not only shoot at you, but they will also spot you. Obviously, other tanks can shoot at you from within the game, but the idea is to not be spotted. This tank is the AMX 5120. This is a French tier 9 heavy tank. The map is Redshire. This tank is also an autoloader. I am going to get 4,400 damage in this game, but more importantly, we're going to see a nice sniping position that you can use in this game. And this sniping position is really good if you are an autoloader or if you have a fast firing gun or if you have a, a derp gun that's well aimed. Uh, so there's many ways to uh, approach this position. Nice, he's out of the game. You want those tanks to be taken out because they're going to be a problem. They pose a threat to you. But basically what you want to do is spot those tanks that are crossing across that gap.
Ouch, an unta unspotted tank was able to hit me. But I got him back. It was pretty much an even trade. One of the things that I'm working on is I'm trying to find a safer way to play this position. Okay, so uh, I got hits on two of those tanks. Uh, there was an, uh, the tank that I hit, the M41 Bulldog, at the beginning of the game who wasn't crossing over. So I got uh, two out of three shots for around 700 damage. So the new position that I'm trying is basically a little bit over there where this uh, other tank is. Allows me to be further away from the hill over there, less likely to be spotted. But you have less of a gap to shoot through when you're trying to uh, shoot at enemy targets. He was too slow to go to the fighting position, so he was taken out of the game. Okay, so I got 2,600 damage and 575 spotting damage so far. There's probably going to be no more tanks to cross over in that position, so let's move on to the next video. This tank is the Foch 155. This is a French Tier 10 tank destroyer. The map is Siegfried Line. This is an awesome tank. I'm so happy that I have this tank. Uh, I waited many years to be able to get it, and finally I, I do have it. Uh, when I play this style of tank, this style of turret, turretless tank destroyer, uh, what I usually do is go to the center of the map, and I go to this position because from here you can shoot all the way through the town, and you have easy access to certain things that are going on in the middle of the town. So... There's often going to be enemy tanks in the distance over here that I can shoot at. And there's going to be uh, fighting going on. You see we got some tanks right here. So I was able to get 1,600 damage. Basically, I take my shots, and then I'm going to reverse while I'm reloading. It's an ideal position for two tanks side by side. Uh, the, being on the left side usually means you're going to have more targets to shoot at. Uh, this is good for tanks that have a long reload, for tanks that have powerful guns that can do damage, a lot of damage in a short amount of time. You can see that E100 is my next target. He shouldn't be there. He's exposing his uh, lower plate. I'm going to be able to damage him very easily. And I try to time it so I crest the hill when I'm ready to fire my gun. Too bad that car was in the way. It, it, it did prevent me from taking some of my shots. I got up to 3,000 damage. Now I'm just focused on reversing. Obviously, I'll repair before the E100 gets a second shot in, so it might not be necessary to do the repair. Now that I'm almost reloaded, it's obviously I'm being a little bit impatient. Uh, I'm preparing to uh, go back into position. It's very important to watch the minimap while you're playing in this position to know if an enemy tank is about to cross in front of your path. Well, it's too bad that I missed those two shots.
one thing about these tanks is you definitely want to get the gun laying drive on these tanks and any sort of crew skill that makes your tank aim faster. My team has controlled uh, the, cent the, the center of the map, which is the western part of the town, which is why I'm not reversing outside the town while I'm reloading. One thing you'll notice about autoloaders is that you have to take longer to aim in your first shot and usually your secondary and your third shot will aim in a lot faster they don't have to aim in as far so sometimes what i do is i fire my first shot without being completely aimed and the reason why is because the reload time is often fast enough that it it's equivalent to the aiming time Obviously, when you have three shells in your autoloader, you're not going to waste a shell like that. But in a normal tank, it's okay to take a shot if you're not fully aimed. Score is 12 to 2. I got 4,900 damage, 444 spotting damage, and three kills. This tank is the AMX 1390. This is a French tier nine light tank. The map is Prokhorovka. I am gonna get three kills. I'm gonna do 2,900 damage, and we're gonna have an easy win for our team. Normally, I don't play on this side of the map. I'm probably looking uh, to try a new spotting position or something that I haven't done in a long time. Uh, there's a few different locations you can use. What you really want to do is go as far as possible into these bushes without getting spotted. Unf unfortunately, I was spotted. Now, what happens if you try to stay in the town, you're going to be a little red dot on the enemy's mini-map, and tanks will come looking for you, so you don't want them to know where you are. Looks like I'm still spotted. Or maybe he took a wild shot. I don't know. You can see there are a lot of different positions that you can sit in on this map. But the question is, how much spotting can you do? So the bush that I was heading to when I was spotted by the T-44 would have been a great position. It would have allowed us to keep the enemy team spotted and they would have been unable to advance easily so obviously because I'm spotted I want to head south the further south you go uh, the safer you are because there actually is a little bit of a slope to the land. I could easily get behind this 252U. Very risky to go after those tanks using the auto-aim. 
Uh, fortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to climb this. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I would be able to do it with a little bit of practice. But sadly, it's difficult to climb that slope from that side. You have to go around. Score 7 to 1. I got 1,700 damage, 400 spotting damage. There's two enemy SPGs that have not been spotted yet. It's very well possible that they're nearby. I usually go to the red line because in order for the enemy to shoot at you, they have to turn their guns all the way around. And uh, turning them around takes them more time. They're less likely to do it. There's lots of advantages to being as far away from the enemy as possible. Up to 2,400 damage and 650 spotting damage. Uh, normally, you don't want to go on the enemy base. Avoid it at all costs because it lets the enemy know where you are. It looks like you are able to pass by with this tank without going on the base, but obviously you can't do it with every tank. Still got a couple tanks that we haven't spotted yet. I decided to leave my shell in the magazine. Although I missed my shot. So at the end of the game, uh, there's a mad rush to kill that final tank and for you to unload your shells as quickly as possible. Every second counts. That was 2,900 uh, damage, 1,200 spotting damage, and three kills. This tank is the ELC Even 90. This is a French Tier 8 light tank, and the map is Paris. Uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see if I can get a spotting position in the center of the map. And I was so close. I was a split second away from succeeding. Uh, basically, I was going to roll out and pick up one of, these, um, one of these bushes, but the enemy ELC showed up and he spotted me. Uh, I was hoping to be able to get a shot. If I could have gotten one of these positions, I would have been able to spot the enemy tanks that's set up over here. I would have been able to spot the enemy tanks that pass through that gap. Anyone that tries to go uh, into this middle area would have been covered pretty good. But unfortunately, um, the enemy scout foiled my plans. So I decided to um, head into the heavy tank area, which is going to be in the south. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to get, actually get two kills um, on these heavy tanks in the south of the game. I'm going to show you how I did it. I'm going to come down here just to annoy the enemy team and to bait them, to come up with a plan, because I don't play a lot here. I have to come up with a strategy for how I'm going to manage this, and I figured out a strategy that worked. Basically what I'm going to do, see those tanks like the WZ-111? A lot of enemy tanks are going to show up down there, like four or five tanks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get behind them, and I'm going to get right on their rear, and I'm going to kill them. But you, I'm going to do it when the timing is right. I'm going to do it when they're one shots, when I've got my ammo loaded, when they're not looking in the right direction. I'm going to get right on in back of them and just blast them. Uh, so I did get spotting damage on two of the tanks that are above me. Right now, I'm just trying to bait these enemy tanks, try to get them to come out, uh, hopefully to track them in place. If I can track them in place, then they'll be stuck in a vulnerable position and my allies will be able to do damage on them and I'll get the tracking assist. It's so one of the techniques that people don't frequently use, uh, but what you want to do is, like I said, wait for him to come out and track him in place and hope he gets stuck. You'll notice on the minimap that there's an ISM who's in the middle of the map that we need to deal with. 
and he's right there. And the T26E5 just showed up. Now, because I was able to track that ISM, I am getting the assistance damage when my allies are damaging him. I received about 900 assistance damage simply by tracking him in place. So once that T26E5 is gone, we're going to go and we're going to flank uh, the enemy tanks that, are, that I pointed out earlier. You can see I'm trying to track him. By tracking him, it makes it easier for my allies to go after him, especially because some of my allies that were there are Tier A tanks, and they might not have high penetrating guns. So we want the enemy tank to be stuck in position so my allies uh, have an advantage. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the bridge. I'm going to get behind the enemy team. You can see that some of them are one-shots, such as a WZ-111. I'm going to get behind them, kill them off, and then I'm going to hide and let my allies finish the job. So you can see this is where I'm sneaking in. You can see there's a T-34B that showed up. I've got uh, lots of tanks I can hide behind. So now I got a long reload. Uh, from this point, I just have to sit here reload. Got some of my allies are showing up on the rear flank. We've basically got these tanks beat. It scores nine to zero. It is a quite a long reload. <laughs> Look at what this T forty nine is doing. <laughs> Now, obviously, I'm going to hide. The Object 705 thinks he's going to hit me, but I, it's very easy for me to hide from him. Okay, so the score score is 12 to 1. I got two kills. I did 619 damage, 1,900 spotting and assistance damage. That's, that's going to be it for me. We are going to win this game uh, 15 to 1. Uh, but I'm not going to be able to get any more shots in, so let's move on.